In this video, we're gonna find out what driver assistance or self-driving tech is better, the Tesla Autopilot or the Cadillac Super Cruise system. Tesla Model Y, and I do apologize for any panting you may hear. That is my puppy Blaze, he's helping me out with the review today. Now there are two main functions of Tesla's autopilot. The first is the adaptive cruise control, and I'm gonna engage that by pulling down on the drive selector stock. There it goes, you can see it's now engaged, and I can adjust the speed by moving the scroll wheel here on the right side of the steering wheel. So the speed limit now is 65, and I have engaged the cruise control at 65 miles per hour. It's going to keep an equal distance between me and the car in front of me. If that car slows down, so will the Tesla. Very simple. Hey guys, Andre here. I interrupt your video for a quick special announcement. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some sort of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Uh, ouch. And the best way to treat it is to get ahead of it while you still have hair left. You used to have to go to a doctor to get a prescription, but now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and have hair loss medication sent directly to your home. Keeps offers the only two FDA approved hair loss products to help save your hair and one product at a price you have not seen before. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash TFL or click on the link in the description below to save 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash T-F-L. Now the next function I'm going to engage is the auto steer. And this is really the heart of autopilot. I do that by pulling down on the stock twice. It's going to beep at me and now I've got an image of a steering wheel in another blue circle. Now auto steer is pretty cool. You can engage it at pretty much any time. You can be on a city street, you can be on a highway, but I find it to be most useful while you're on a highway. And with auto steer engaged, what it's gonna do is keep me centered in the lane. Um, now the key thing with the Tesla autopilot system is it's not hands off. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull my hands off the steering wheel here, and I can do this for somewhere around 30 seconds. And the car will keep me centered in my lane, keep me at the same distance between the car in front of me and uh, the speed that I'm driving. But at some point, it's gonna start flashing and it's gonna tell me to put my hands back on the steering wheel. The other thing that happens is what you saw there. If the lane shifts or if it gets wider for a merge, Tesla's autopilot gets a little bit confused and it gets a little bit zigzaggy as it tries to figure out what's going on. So it's using cameras on the outside of the car to see where the lane markers are and it's going to do my best, it's going to do its best to keep me uh, pointed down the road, but it's not perfect. Now I've been talking this whole time and it still is allowing me to uh, uh, take my hands off, but now you can see the screen starting to flash and it says apply a light turning force to the steering wheel and there we have it. Um, uh, if you don't take control after a while, it will disengage. Now there are two forms of the Tesla self-driving system. Um, the Model Y comes standard with autopilot, which is the adaptive cruise and the uh, assisted steering. But there's another package which you can buy for $10,000 called full self-driving. And it is not full self-driving, uh, to be honest with you. On a highway like this, it's gonna function the same way, so I still have to keep a hand on the steering wheel. The car still has to know I'm in control, but it does add some additional functionality. So for example, if I wanted to change lanes, I could turn on my left turn signal and it will automatically make that lane change. But once again, still have to have force on the steering wheel for it to uh, stay engaged. It will also do auto park. Uh, it'll do summon in a parking lot so it can come and get you in a parking lot. And apparently it'll even slow down a traffic light, but it's $10,000. And when it comes to functionality cruising down on the highway, it's not all that different than the standard autopilot. So at this time, there's not a real need to, to pay that extra cost, in my opinion. Um, but Tesla can add additional functionality over an over-the-air software update. So at some point, it could be even crazier than what the Tesla offered, offers now. Next up is the 2021 Cadillac Escalade. 
Now, Cadillac has a very cool option called Super Cruise, and the price depends on the trim, but it's somewhere between $2,500 and $6,000, depending on which Escalade you get. And Super Cruise is supposed to be pretty special. Now, Tesla's Autopilot works pretty well. It's a hands-on system, but as long as you have a hand resting on the steering wheel, it pretty much does a rest, at least on uh, like a highway situation. Now, the Super Cruise system is apparently hands-off, completely hands-off, and that's what we're going to uh, figure out today. Now, just like the Tesla system, it does have adaptive cruise control, so I've engaged it right there, and I can use a little toggle on the left side of the steering wheel to increase the speed, so there we go. Set it to 65, which is the speed limit on this um, highway we're merging onto. And then, we're gonna see how this Super Cruise system works with the autonomous steering. So, here we go. I'm now on the highway. Cruise control is set to 65, and I'm gonna wait for a little icon here on the screen. It's this little grayed out steering wheel. Now, I should be able to push this button down here, and it's turned green. And you can see there's a green light up here on the steering wheel. Now let's see if this works. I should be able to take my hands off completely and drive not for 30 seconds with my hands off, but for hours. Let's see if it works. Here we go. That's a weird sensation knowing that I could do this for miles. Now here's how the uh, Super Cruise system functions. There's actually sensors in front of me here that are watching my eyes and they're making sure that I'm watching the road ahead because they want me to still be engaged. They want me to still pay attention. But apparently, I don't have to touch the steering wheel whatsoever. It's been, what, 30 seconds or so? And it's still on. It's not telling me to put my hands on the steering wheel like the Tesla would be right now. It's not telling me to take control. It's just letting me cruise along. Now the way this works is, if I start looking down, for example, the system is going to be upset and it's gonna disengage. Let's see how it handles this off-ramp here. It's not trying to take the off-ramp. No, I'm still centered perfectly in the lane, cruising along at, in this case, 58 miles an hour. Cruise control set to 65. It's following uh, our videographer in front of us. And once again, I mean, I haven't touched the steering wheel at all. I haven't touched the uh, pedals at all. It feels more confident than the Tesla system. You can, you can really tell that the Tesla system is using cameras and is trying to use lane markers. The Cadillac system is very solid. I would say even better. Now let's see what happens if I look away for a sec or look down. Okay, I'm looking down, monitoring the road using my front-facing camera. No, it's, it's, it's still engaged. Here, let me try this. Let me try covering up the little camera sensor so it can't see my eyes. Let's see what happens then. Okay, so it's starting to blink. That means it's not happy. And now it's saying disengage and cruise control, take control of the vehicle and it's red and I'm slowing down. Okay, so I've taken control now. So yeah, if, if the camera becomes blocked or if it senses that you look away, it will disengage completely. Let me go ahead and flick it back on. It's back on. Um, I've got an experiment I wanna try. So here I've got a mask because of, um, well, I think you know why. Let me try putting it on. I'm curious to see if Super Cruise will still recognize my eyes and my face or if it's gonna get confused and start freaking out. No, even with the mask on, it's, <laughs> that's pretty incredible. Now the other cool thing is apparently Super Cruise can also change lanes for you without touching the steering wheel at all. So I'm going to flick on my turn signal. It says auto lane change, changing lanes. Oh, it just did it all by itself. That is so weird. Complete, how about the other way? Changing lanes, hands fully off. Complete. Now I turn off the turn signal. That's pretty wild, guys. So it works really well. I mean, I've never felt anything like this. I'm a little bit uneasy, but the more that we cruise down the highway, the more confident that I am in the system. So there you can see the little green indicator letting us know it's on. There is the lane change functionality. Ooh, it got blocked by the camera when I put it there. Let me try going the other way. Ooh, it came, came pretty close to cutting off that escape there. 
but it was a safe safe change overall. Yeah, this is amazing. Now here's the thing though. The Tesla Autopilot and the Auto Steer will will work or at least try to work on any street. So you could be on a little back road or in a neighborhood and it will do its best to uh, try to keep you pointed down the road as safely as it can, of course, with the hand on the steering wheel. Super Cruise will only work on marked highways. Um, now, Cadillac says there are over 200,000 miles uh, of mapped highways in their system, but if you're not on one of those, this cool, totally automatic steering function won't work. Of course, the cruise control is still going to function. Now, I think that's okay because, in my opinion, I only use uh, you know these autonomous systems while I'm on safe highways. I would never use one on a back road because I don't trust it enough, but it is worth something to take in mind. So, I need to get off the highway here. Super Cruise is still active. Now it says Super Cruise disengaging, so it knows that this is the end of the road. We're going on the city streets. It's time to uh, take control. It vibrates the seats and off we go. Now here we go onto a, uh, a surface street. So this doesn't. This one has you know lefts and rights and stuff. Um, in this case, it's going to start out as a two-lane divided road with a 45 mile per hour speed limit. Um, yeah, the cruise control option has disappeared, so it can no longer activate uh, Super Cruise, but Adaptive Cruise is still working. Super Cruise unavailable. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I was expecting. All right, well, um, that was pretty cool, I have to say. Uh, of course, the Cadillac still has a full suite of um, safety functions, including lane keep assist, um, but it won't do like the, the stoplight thing, such as the Tesla in, in in the quote-unquote full self-driving. But in my opinion, if you're using these systems, you should be on a major highway in the first place where there's not people, you know, at stoplights trying to make rights in front of you. And the Super Cruise system felt more confident than the Tesla system. Uh, Autopilot does a good job, but you know, when, when lanes kind of start sw swerving around and gets a little bit confused, this was right on the money the whole time. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. What do you think, Blaze? Puppy Blaze is impressed too. That's for sure. So the Tesla system is more versatile. You can engage autopilot in the middle of a city. You can engage it on a frontage road. You can engage it pretty much anywhere. The Super Cruise system is much more locked down to pre-mapped highways. But I will say, even though it's less versatile, Super Cruise is pretty amazing. And I think it's more confidence inspiring and just overall more impressive than even the Tesla full self-driving or autopilot systems. Now let me know which you think is more impressive in the comment section below. And as always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Check out tvlcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.